everyone. This is Adriana, and I'm joined here with my beautiful grandmother, Caitlin, here. We're back again for Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast. And this time we are covering the more towards the end of September. We're going to be talking about some really cool alignments. We got a lot of mermaid energy happening uh, the end of this month with a partial lunar eclipse. So if you are new here, we are granddaughter and grandmother joined together, sharing our perspective on the coming astrology and the energy going on at this time. I'm based in the UK. I've been a professional intuitive tarot reader for over four years now, um, but I was dabbling with oracle cards since I was a little kid and um, learned a lot from my grandmother, my grandparents, and now we are both galactic astrologers, and I do past life readings with the galactic astrology too. I'm Caitlin and been doing things for a long, long time. Astrology is somewhat new since uh, about 2018, and galactic astrology, very new, only just for a couple years, but uh, loving it. I'm enjoying learning more things. It's fascinating. <laughs> it really is. And we are both available to do astrology reports and readings, and we've been contacted by many of you. We're very excited to, to do this for you, and we look forward to hearing from you. Yes, mm -hmm. namaste. <laughs> We're going to dive in a little bit here to um, the lunar eclipse coming up on the 17th of September. This is in the States. Um, it will be around... Um, 8 39 p.m um eastern daylight time and let's see in your part of the world i'm not sure what that time would be it's like five hour difference i think mm -hmm. yeah okay five so hours might, ahead. Yeah. let's just talk about what a lunar eclipse is first off it happens twice a year when the earth is in alignment with the full moon and sun while the sun casts earth's shadow upon the full moon often creating a red color that lasts for several hours. So on September 17th, during the full moon in the zodiac sign of Pisces, this lunar eclipse may be more difficult to see because it is a penumbral eclipse, which means it's barely seen in a smaller outer part of the Earth's shadow, around 25 degrees. So it's not a fully aligned eclipse. So they call it a partial eclipse. So what what this may mean is energetically um, is that it could mean Pisces energies, which love to dream and fantasize, may not want to see what is in the shadows lurking deep since the penumbra is more on the surface and not going deep. And what does this mean to the sun in Virgo energies, which often prefers to focus wholly on perfectionism as the center of their universe? So it's all about balancing the opposites between the polarity of the moon in Pisces and the sun in Virgo. And you can't get much more opposite than the feminine emotional moon and the masculine mental sun. Both of these luminaries directly affect our lives, especially with the zodiac sign of ultra sensitive Pisces, which may impact our emotional body and may be felt through our chakra energy centers. This penumbral eclipse I am sensing uh, is more like a debate between what is real and what is fantasy. The more outer layers of egos versus the deeper inner layers of soul energies. Your ego may be taking you one direction. Your soul says, nope, we're going this way. <laughs> That's is the best way to describe that. And your soul is going to direct you towards what is real. The ego will always go towards the illusion what the uh, is called Maya, the illusion out here that is not real. So again, so much of what we talked about in our first video for this month um, is about looking within. So if we've been looking within, we're going to connect with our soul. And when we get further into this fall, this 2024 autumn, um, if we are looking more from our soul perspective, we will we will know what to do. Um, if we're still caught in our ego and in the illusion, we may be uh, suffering from the the fantasies and not what is reality. So that's basically what it means. 
Yeah, especially with that Pisces energy. There's a lot of Pisces going on. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I think I'll share the chart really quick. Um, okay. Here it is. So yeah, you can see uh, right, right here, there's a lot of that Pisces energy happening with that mm -hmm. new moon. Um, or I'm sorry, the full moon, we we're just talking about the new moon in the last video, but <laughs> right, right, right. With, yeah, with the moon full there. Moon, full moon lunar eclipse, correct. Yeah, <laughs> with the lunar eclipse going on. And uh, we see these alignments happening with Markov and Sheet in the Pegasus constellation, which we'll be talking about soon. And yes, yes creating lots of that water energy, which we'll definitely see, uh, especially from Sheet. I'm going to talk mm -hmm. about that um so those of you who have alignments mm -hmm. that in your own galactic astrology chart you'll want to listen in for that but yeah even um you know saturn and pisces going on there so lots of watered down things happening next mm -hmm. to the uh, aries going on so i'm going to share my tarot message now mm -hmm. and this is based off this partial lunar eclipse so i got the five of pentacles here and immediately what came to mind with this five of pentacles um this is my cat tarot deck by the way so if you see cats that's why <laughs> <laughs> little cat illustrations um what came to mind right away with this five of pentacles is that sense of struggle but also that victim type mentality so we kind of touched on that in the last video if you haven't watched it but mm -hmm. it's coming up even more so now with that pisces energy that we can kind of fall into that sense of you know victimhood and sometimes of course it's not your own fault by any means um things happen in life right but how can you get through it what are some practical measures that you can take for yourself how can you take care of your mental health and yourself the death card came out too on the bottom of the deck and death is about transformations here. So with mm. death comes rebirth. So mm, how can it. you have a kind of rebirth through this partial lunar eclipse in Pisces? Yes, yes, okay. definitely. Well, we are going to dive into um, the uh, Pegasus connections that Adriana just showed us. We have the Pisces at zero, uh, excuse me, one degree. Um, and that's going to go all the way through um, Aries at nine degrees. And, and then we're going to have, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Markab. Markab at, at towards the end of the video is at 23 degrees and it will move into about 24 degrees. So everything's moving kind of slow. And then sheet, which Adriana is going to talk about, is going to go from 29 degrees to one degree. So this is where these uh, energies are taking place. A little bit of Greek mythology and about Pegasus uh, energy and the traits and the story. Um, so basically, Pegasus was born when the hero Perseus cut off Medusa's head. He actually sprang from her severed neck and was considered fathered by Poseidon. So Pegasus is capable of flying and is immortal, primarily associated with the hero Bello, Bellerophon, Bellerophon, I don't know if I'm going to say that right, <laughs> who tamed Pegasus and rode him into battle on numerous occasions. Um, so we can think of the symbolism of Pegasus um, like as this hoofed master of the ground and then yet winged master of the air. So I love that. So there's earth element and air element in here. Um, and then also Pegasus represents speed, strength, um, and artistic inspiration. There's an encompassing of beauty and a sense of majesty. If you think of that beautiful white winged horse, definitely beauty and majesty. Um, and is considered a guide for humankind beyond the physical world to the realm where the spirit can soar without without limits. So kind of looked at often as um, an energy, a spirit energy that would take us to our next lifetime, possibly to the astral realms. Who's to say? Uh, I just love Greek mythology. I know you do, too. 
Yeah. Could I add something? Oh, sure. Please, please. When you said that, it reminded me of, you know, when you said the Pegasus uh, taking you into the astral realms in Norse mythology, it's, Mm -hmm. um, oh gosh, I'm blanking out on the name. They they go to uh, Valhalla, uh, but there's the- The Valkyries, the Valkyries. The Valkyrie, yeah. Sorry, it's just slipping my mind. (laughs) Yes, but uh, that reminded me of that too. So I love, that was a great parallel. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Well, it's interesting that um, in this story of Pegasus and the one who was writing him, Bellerophon, is simple. I thought this was very important, and I think we can apply it into our lives, is to avoid hubri. And hubri, what does that mean? It's excessive arrogance, pride, or being overly self-confident. There's a a lot of that energy moving through, especially our country, <laughs> but I think it's everywhere in the world. And I think there's something big moving in to shift and change that. Again, I spoke of our previous, I think now two videos ago, the divine feminine is flying in, maybe on the wings of Pegasus. Um, and um, so it's, it's like powerful. A like a Valkyrie. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> You're making me remember a an episode from Xena, the war- the spirit warrior goddess or something yeah. <laughs> to watch these shows. And she had, she was part of the Valkyries or something. I just had that great vision. Yeah, yeah the Amazonians, uh, like Wonder was, Woman. Too. Yes, oh, I love that. Now I want to watch that show again. Yeah. <laughs> it was incredible. Um, I learned a lot about Greek mythology from watching those shows. Yeah. They were so well done and and filmed in New Zealand and just gorgeous, gorgeous uh, filming location. Let's talk a little bit about um, the starseed traits that come along with Pegasus, just in generality with that constellation. Um, one of the things that stood out to me, and I and I have this in my chart. Do you have it in your chart as well? Do you have a sheet or markab? You know, I actually meant to <laughs> to look at that, and I just. I, I spend so much time looking at other people's charts. I forget my own. <laughs> I think I do have um a, like some sort of um sextile or a trine maybe to it. I don't yeah. think I had a conjunction to it. Uh, but funny enough, I seem to so far be attracting a lot of people yes. from this yes. compilation. So I, I feel like I'm becoming an expert on this. <laughs> well, I think it's our mermaid energy because yeah, I yes. also, attracting uh, Lemurian and mermaid oriented mm-hmm. people too. It's fascinating. Yeah, I think so too. And they yeah. have, and they also have, you probably have it because I have it too in my chart. Um, but what I thought was interesting when I was looking at some of these um, starseed traits was of, of being a peacemaker. If that stood out really strong to me in a negotiator. Um, and I think that comes through because I feel um, when a Pegasus starseed um, would be a personality that is kind of a little bit more balanced, um, may speak truth, um, and but do it in a compassionate way, like I spoke of in our last video. Yeah, um, like a Libra energy. Um, yeah, I just, I can't remember. I think, well, actually, what was it? It was a um, combination of, I think, Pisces and Aries is what hmm. we're looking at. So it's the Piscean hmm. inner area, uh, yeah. energies. Um, so, and then just a little bit into, to Aries, they span 40 degrees in that area between the two. The yeah. Two balancing zones. of the water and, and fire. Mm. Yes, exactly. So getting into hot water, <laughs> you have to watch out for that. But, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not, when they say, we say a peacemaker, we don't mean somebody that's, um, like, like, a, a milk toast person at all. This person could be very ambitious, have many goals, um, even to the point of being a workaholic. Mm-hmm. Um, and this kind of a person in Aries, this is where Aries comes in. Many Aries just feel like their life is one big rush. It's just like, uh, whoosh, you know, constantly going, constantly going. Um, but yet I know some Aries, I, I, I know some people that may fall into this that could also be an incredible listener. And may even do counseling as their work. So I can see like a, a counseling kind of career associated with Pegasus. Um, and uh, and that, that this person would have patience. So a pretty balanced individual um, would fall into this unless 
they are succumbing to the negative traits, which we spoke of earlier, of excessive arrogance, overly self-confident um, type of energies. Did you want to add anything to that uh, from what you have studied? Um, well, so far with what I've seen, um, one person in particular so far uh, who had alignments to here, well, actually a couple of people come to mind. They definitely were following that, not necessarily being a counselor, but they were that person that everybody goes to or they do some sort of healing work. So that is interesting. Also interdimensional travelers. Um, and we talked about that with Hydra and Corvus in uh, two videos ago. If you want to check out our what do we call that one? The awakening goddesses or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so those are the last full moon around that mm -hmm, in right. August. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Hydra and goddess. Hydra, that's it. Hydra awakening. And uh, so another group that's very interdimensional traveling. Um, and uh, so they also are shamanic and easy to astral travel, lucid dreaming. Uh, usually this person would meditate easily if you wanted to share about your findings and and definitely share the beautiful graphic that your first gorgeous graphic that i've seen i'm sure you have many but uh, um, i'm so excited that you're going to share it for the first time da -da -da -da. Yeah, i've only um <laughs> so far i've just done one as of now but i'm sure you know because i've always been very creative my whole life so of course i'll probably make some other ones in the future but yeah, I will talk about Beta Pagasi or Sheet as it's called, so interchangeably. Um, so, but before I go into that, um, I just want to say Neptune in Pisces, like I showed in the chart earlier in this video, if, if you are watching the video, but no worries if you're not, if you're listening, that's also totally fine. Um, sometimes I think it's easier listening to things like this, but Neptune in Pisces, you'd see was conjunct uh, sheet in the Pegasus constellation. So what does this mean? Um, it basically doesn't get more watered down than this. So emotions can be heightened, uh, vivid, lucid dreams at this time, uh, heightened intuition also really coming through. Uh, emotions, of course, will be at an all-time high. So be gentle with yourself at this time around this partial lunar eclipse. Uh, be also careful of escapism. Uh, release any sort of victim mentality like we saw with that tarot card coming up. So that really validated um, what I was seeing here with the tarot card also coming out. Yep. Um, releasing that. If you've been stuck in that sort of um, victim consciousness, um, do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Nurture your inner mermaid. Go with the flow of the energy at this time. So that's my astrological advice for this time around this partial lunar eclipse. Uh, and yeah, so what does this mean with this conjunction to sheet? So I will go ahead and yeah, share my little graphic, which if you get a reading with me and you do have this alignment, um, this would show up in your report, your written report with me. So Sheet, also called Beta Pegasi, like I mentioned. There is a love of being near water or swimming and or swimming interchangeably. And everybody that I've yeah, connected with so far, like I said, that has these alignments, they all have definitely resonated with these traits, especially the, the water element of it with wanting to be near water or they enjoy swimming. It just helps them to get centered and grounded and even find, always finding yourself near water, no matter where you go in life. Uh, also that comes with an interest in sea creatures, even mermaids, of course, <laughs> intelligence and a love of learning. You might have a very scientific mind um, with a spirituality balance. So mm -hmm. being able to balance both of those um, and the creative spirit that naturally comes with sheets as well. So if any of these traits do sound like you, let us know. And if you do want a reading from either of us, uh, just contact us at our emails, which are in the description below as always.
Uh, that graphic is just gorgeous. I just love oh, the way you. you did that. You're um, welcome to use it too, if you like. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, just beautiful. <laughs> Makes me think of you, of course. <laughs> um, I did want to speak a little to what you shared because you brought up again that victim consciousness. And yes, mm -hmm. life happens. Nobody asks for a tsunami to arrive in their life. Um, and uh, we don't cause that to happen. But where we can shine, where we can move forward is how we react, how we respond to what has happened. Um, and uh, I don't think if I, one of the most beautiful response I ever saw was the tsunami, the tsunami in Japan and how the people came together yes. to help another was incredible. I, I remember watching some of the videos and people uh, like a group of 20 people going to move something all lifting, breathing together as they're lifting bringing their energies together. It was just incredible uh, how different the world would be if we would all address situations like that instead of fighting against one another, but coming together to work towards, um, you know, fixing whatever has happened um, without feeling the victim. So, or if we feel a little bit of being a victim, then you have others in that community to help you. And, and then you just you just bounce back in and you do what you got to do. So there's something so special about that. And uh, but I do want to start talking a little bit about Mark Cobb, um, known as Alpha Pegasi, which is a blue white star. And it's about 139 light years away from Earth. And Mark Cobb translates from the uh, Arabic mythology as the word saddle. So the saddle of the horse. Um, so when we think of um, Pegasus, that word, the Markov, would be associated with the saddle on Pegasus, so to speak. <clears throat> the fixed star shares its energies with both Mercury and Mars, giving it the same fire-like traits that souls can grow from. Oftentimes, souls who've experienced lifetimes connected to Markov have lessons involving rage and loss of emotional control. So that's something to think about, um, to bring in ways to um, heal and work with your anger, work with not burying it, but expressing it in a way that is constructive. Um, exercise, being in nature, um, running, cycling, things that burn up energy that when anger flashes, that's yawn energy just moving through us. And if we can direct it in a healthy way, it can make such a difference. I really wish we could teach kids uh, in, in really early in school, really how to handle their emotions. There should be, maybe they're doing it now. I'm kind of far removed from uh, what the uh, schools are doing. Maybe some of the more uh, new earth oriented schools, but I'm sure are doing it, but teaching them how colors, how blue, if they're feeling angry, how visualizing blue can calm them. Um, or if they're really low in energy, how, you know, invoking a vision of orange or red can bring up energy, you know, take us out of a yin slump and into some yan movement. <laughs> so I think that could be helpful. So Markov provides opportunities to learn how to set boundaries. So that is a wonderful way to deal with any kind of rage or anger is having a healthy boundary of some kind. Um, I think that's super important. Um, and just like we talked about um, with what you shared with Sheet and then just the Pegasus constellation uh, star traits in general, um, incredible psychic ability, um, gifts. Um, and with Markov, definitely more of a desire for freedom and independence that came through really strong. Um, Billy with technology, um, innovation. Um, and again, these are these are Markov, like uh, the other Pegasus star seeds, are great interdimensional travelers. So that's what I had to share about Markov. I feel these star seeds are very, very helpful um, to understand mm -hmm. in these times. Yeah, Markov's kind of the fire and uh, sheep is the water mm -hmm, mm -hmm. part of the Pegasus constellation balancing those energies. 
So the uh, Pegasus star seeds, like what I feel has really stood out is um, their ability to be uh, very shamanic, um, their ability to see like interdimensionally what's going on. And I feel they are going to be extremely helpful to us during this time coming up, this end of 2024. So many different things happening in the world. And um, and there could be people who may feel victimized um, as we move forward um, towards 2024. So again, it's all how we choose to view it. Uh, we have uh, total control over our perspective of how we are experiencing something. We do not have total control over life happens. We spoke about that a little bit earlier. Um, so I, I felt impulse to um, go to one of my Oracle decks. Here we go. Gaia Oracle deck. And the uh, author is uh, Tony Carmine Salerno. And I pulled out um, this beautiful card and this is Ganesha. Um, beautiful, wise, uh, God, goddess. <laughs> it's just like the most balanced, uh, of all and, um, the remover of obstacles. And so if we go into this time feeling laden with obstacles, uh, remember this card, I think it will be helpful because, because again, Ganesha clears away obstacles provides protection and guidance. Ganesha, one of the most worshiped deities in the Hindu pantheon, has shown up in your reading today as an omen of good fortune. Whatever has thwarted your progress or prevented you from moving forward will soon be resolved. An obstacle is clear and you are free to move on. Your plans are now able to come to fruition. Know that everything happens for a reason. The blockages you have faced were in fact a blessing in disguise, an act of divine intervention. Timing and circumstances were previously not favorable and your efforts would only have ended in disappointment and failure. The path is now clear and the timing is right. Your stars are in alignment. So here's an affirmation that comes along with this beautiful card. I am protected and guided by a higher power. When the path is blocked, I take this as a sign to wait. I give thanks for divine intervention. When the path is clear, I move forward with ease. All that occurs or does not occur is for my highest good. Beautiful card. Yeah. yeah. It's personally, I can see this is a personal card for me because I've had some uh, health issues. And this was just perfect because I've just within the last two days of a total shift in what's going to be happening. So that really brought home that trust in higher power, trust in your guidance and how the universe is going to move things to bring forth the very highest good. Yeah. 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 Definitely. A lot of other people might be feeling that too. Exactly. I think that was such a great, um, message to get after you know seeing that the tarot message that I shared and then um, mm -hmm. having that as uh, Ganesha coming in with that message yeah. really nice yes. <laughs> yes absolutely and just send forth a wave of much love and we look forward to seeing you again in October Yes, um, October's yeah. one of my favorite yeah. seasons. Yes, there you go. Pika brew. Pika brew, my little ghost coat. I haven't looked forward yet to October. I, I One thing I'm not crazy about in astrology is uh, we're constantly living one month ahead. I know. I'm like, what's? I don't even remember half the time what's happening because I'm looking ahead. And then by the time I get there, then I feel like I'm behind. Yeah, I've had to a couple of yeah. times look back at my notes yeah, mm -hmm. or look back at my posts on Facebook to my my group, yeah. my astrology group, and then and then I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's me on too. Last month, <laughs> definitely come back to this video um, after you know the lunar eclipse, and even at the end of the month too to see yeah. you know if anything's resonating after. Yes. 
And even look back at um, how these these eclipses, this is mirroring very much like the one that happened in March 25th yeah. of this past year as well, too. So um, there's some similarities in, and it's good to look at that or like look at your journal, like what was happening then? Uh, how was I handling it then? And then what's happening now, uh, September 17th and 18th. And of course we have the, you know, the big full moon all at the same time, lunar eclipse, full moon. And uh, so time for a lot of light coming in. So, look at, look at my uh, transformation happens. Yeah, We're going to be, all become beautiful butterflies. We're still yeah. in the gooey, gooey caterpillar sack, <laughs> cocoon sack. Yeah, maybe um, through winter we might be too still. <laughs> maybe in well, spring. One difference between uh, when the butterfly is going to come out pretty quickly, our time is going to take some time, but I feel I was just listening to a, another uh, gal who does a lot what what I do and has wonderful guides and 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 everybody's getting this message that you know by 20 30 we, we won't recognize this world. It would be nice to even listen back to this you and I or something over just a cup of tea together and go, wow, you know, yeah, look how far we've come. I can't even believe that's where yeah. we were at, at all, you know? And uh, so, um, and then also looking at how, you know, how we've grown, how much we have grown. So, I mean, look at just from now compared to 2019, I see people talking about that all oh, the time, how it yeah. feels like we're still processing all of that time. So exactly. it'll be amazing. Yeah. To see. Oh yeah. The next five yeah. years brings. Yeah. yeah. And, and I feel it's going to not all happen at once. Um, and then that's where Uranus retrograde comes in um, of keep softening it. Because um, if we were in direct going through this fall, it would feel a lot different. So this a little bit of calming, inward looking um, and making decisions for yourself, not based on everything out here, really going in and looking at, at your soul your soul will direct you. Yeah, if you haven't seen the video where we were talking about Uranus retrograde, that was the one previous to this one for the first part of September. So do go check that out if you haven't seen it. And uh, as always, thank you all so much for joining us for our mm -hmm. podcast. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Share with your friends if you enjoy our podcast. And uh, do like this video. Yes. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, and we will see you in the next one.